Good morning, everyone. This is Grimbacore. Today, I am going to be going through two major changes that I have made to Battle for the Grid in my mod. Now, the first one is something that people have been asking for for a long time since I started this mod, which is custom colors or modded skins for characters. And I have managed to bring that into the game. And the second one is a memory leak fix. Now, if you've ever spent time in training modes, you will know that memory leaks are a problem. If you're on a lesser powered device, then, you know, you're going to feel it after 30 minutes of an hour of hitting restart. So we're going to go through both of those. But most importantly, we're going to go through the modded skins. So first of all, you need to enable custom textures. And that will uh, load the it will load the colors into the game. We'll go through how to load them and how to store them in a minute. But first of all, I just want to show you, you know, show you how cool this is. So we have color one, color two. And now we have Camo, Sniper, and Nikolai. You know, these things didn't exist before. So we've got Lauren, Color 1, Color 2, Blue Flame. That seems pretty nifty. And we've got Wolvercat. So we've got those three. And for these, we're going to pick... Uh, we've got Dark King. Uh, who else has got one? Uh, yep, actually, uh, we've got Paladin, which is pretty cool. And we like Pink RJ, so we're going to pick a Pink RJ. So the way that this works is that it replaces the colors. You've got color one and color two in the game. And it will, it will basically, whenever you pick a character with a custom skin, it will pick color one. And then when the game loads, it will replace color one with the custom texture. And uh, so that means it shouldn't affect your opponent. However, um, no, there is no however. Actually, it, shouldn't, it doesn't affect your opponent. I've been testing this and testing this. Um, so... Uh, it won't affect consoles, it won't affect online play, it, it's all good. As far as I'm aware, I've been testing thoroughly, it's all good. The Your opponent won't see the skins, basically. They will just see color one, for example. Now, uh, you can see these, the, you know, these, have been, uh, these are colors that have been added. Uh, we also have Lauren, who, no, she was called Blue Flame, but she's looking a kind of gray, right? But that's because I have replaced all of the colors from red to blue for all of her animations, which I think looks pretty cool. I don't know about you. And then, of course, we have Wolvercat as well, who's cat, but also Wolverine, you know, because uh, that is what everyone thinks of when they think of cat. And we have the Dark King, which is Draken. We also have Paladin, which is kind of cool. Oh, uh, what's the button for? Snap, there we go. I'm doing this on a keyboard. And then we got a very pink RG. So that is, uh, you know, these are the modded skins. And uh, let's go through quickly. Actually, yeah, let's go through quickly on how to do this. So we're going to come out of the game. We'll load up the textures. So Battle of the Grid. And you've got your Bepinex, your plugins. And now we have this folder here called Textures. By the way, for the folders that I just went through, uh, you will need to go through the GitHub and the wiki on how to install this, which I will put in the description and we'll also I'm also going to show the page in a minute so when you download the mod now and you go to extract it to this folder there will now be a Texas folder that we also extract to and here you've got every single character in the game now NB for the record is Adam that is the only one that you might read and go who the hell is this um you've got Red who is Jason and you have uh where is she Lauren who's the other Red Ranger. So you've also got a static folder, and the static folder will always load textures into every single scene, every single match. So that could be used for like replacing assets on a stage or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Now we had, um, who did we have? We had, we had Magna, for example. And you can see in here, it's got two folders, each folder is a color name and when we put, go inside here you will have that we uh let's go into paladin so we have the alb and the alb is the the skin texture and you can see it's all being recolored and what you've also got in here which uh i didn't actually realize was part of the skin is replacements for vfx so these are the different effects that magna has for his character and as you can see, they've all been recolored. We can, so when you load the character, when you load Paladin, it will also attempt to replace all of these VFX. I'm going to show you the Lauren one because it's a bit more obvious because 
Lauren fire red, fire now blue. You know, it's it's pretty it's pretty simple. Uh, so here you go. You've got a butterflies which are now blue. You got petals that are now blue. All these fire animations are now blue as well. Now the only downside to this is that if your opponent also picks Lauren, uh, they will just get color one and color two, but it also will replace their VFX for another color. There is no way to fix this. No way to fix this because there is only one version of this in the game. So when it loads it into the scene, and we, uh, you know, this mod replaces it, it, it just replaces it for everyone. Uh, whereas with this, you've got Alb, and in the game it will also do um, color two, something like that. Actually, I think it's I think it's Lauren color two Alb. So and that would be the other color in the game. So it's it's the Alb's that are the only thing that have the different names. So this is fine, it won't replace it for both characters, but this will replace it for both characters. And that, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, you've got different ones for different characters. They all appear in the character select screen. If you make changes, you need to reboot the game because it loads it when you first uh, load the game or when you first enable the uh, check mark. So uh, that's it, that's it. So uh, how to install the mod? How to install the mod? Um, GitHub. I have a GitHub page, it will be in the description as well. And the only thing I'll say is if you're unfamiliar with GitHub, um, you have a link here. Click here to see wiki for instructions. You've also got the wiki up here. And you have the releases page where you can actually just download the mod straight away, the latest version. So we click here, download it, open it up. So you see you've got all the files here, including this new textures folders, which are all empty. Um, with regards to assets, don't ask me how to get them. There, there will be a link in the description on how to extract them from your own copy of the game. And as you can tell, I am just making sure that I stay above board with this. So we have the wiki. And on the right-hand side, it says all links to topics are on the right-hand side. So we've got installing the mod. And it will go through how to install it. Linux users, there is an extra step here. Very important because we use Proton in order to play this game. Steam Deck, currently there's an issue. This page will be updated as and when uh, things change. So don't use this video or my other videos as a reference anymore for installing the mod. Just refer to this website, uh, it'll refer to this wiki, go through the steps and just do it that way. Because uh, no doubt over time, this will become out of date. So, and that, that's pretty much it. And uh, here on the right hand side, I have also added every single feature how to, how it works, what it does, and how to use it basically. So for example, for Collision Box Viewer, it goes through what it is, how to enable it, uh, like, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So that moves us on to, we're just gonna move, I'm gonna move on to the second topic of this, which is the experimental tab, which is kind of all in block caps because it's experimental. Enable memory leak fix. Now, if you've ever played this game and sit there in training mode and you've gone, you know, you've reset, 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 reset. If you're on a lower pound device, you'll find that the game gets sluggish over time. On consoles, it will eventually crash. Now, when you enable memory leak fix, I have fixed the memory leak experimentally. So what it is, is whenever you have something like Slayer has this aura around her, that is uh, a material in the game. I'm going to try and not get too technical on this, but basically that's a material. Now, when you reset, some of these materials don't um, don't clean up after themselves. They don't do what's called garbage collection on themselves. And that is what causes the memory leak. Um, notable ones are like Daishi. Daishi has a lot of them, but whenever you um, reset, it doesn't clean up his materials and it just keeps adding more and more and more and more copies of them. And that is eventually what causes the uh, the leak uh, the memory problems and the crashes. So what I've done is that when this is enabled, whenever you reset in training mode, it's going to clear all the materials. And as part of the reset process, I haven't actually um, changed anything in the game with this regard. It will recreate them. It always recreates the materials when you do a reset. So uh, the only thing that changes for you as a user is that um, when you reset, I'm not sure if you can see it, but um, Slayer goes magenta for a second. You can see there. 
she goes magenta. She loses her skin, goes magenta. Perfectly normal, don't worry about it. It's just because we're cleaning the materials, there's no material on her, so she goes magenta. It makes perfect sense. It's not a problem. And I haven't noticed any problems with this, but I've marked it as experimental because it's like kind of technically a bit weird, you know, deleting all the materials and restarting. But I've been using this for weeks and I've not noticed any problems with it. And um, yeah, if, if, if you're on a device that suffers from multi, uh, lots of resets, definitely get a hold of this and give it a try. If there's any problems, um, let me know. You can either catch me on Discord, on the Battle for the Grid Discord server, or there is an issues tab here, a uh, feature here, and you can go new issue and create an issue there. So, and it's also in the wiki, if I'm a writer. Look, how do I log a problem? There you go. And it tells you where to find the logs. It's incredible. I love it. So that is it for the major features. The only other feature I think I've added, um, well, I've added a fix. Uh, where are you? Training mode. Uh, showed frame data for attacks. This works now. It did crash. It did cause freezes, and you had to uncheck it in order to unfreeze the game. My bad. Uh, I made a mistake in the code. It has been fixed, but the other one is Twitch integration. So enable Twitch integration. Oop. There we go, game freezes for a second because I haven't threaded it. Um, so that's just logged me into Twitch. <coughs> so that's just logged me into Twitch. We go to, you can also go to login. You can do twitchtokengenerator.com. Uh, this is a link to a website that allows you to create a token. This has been pre configured to only give you access to what you need. So it's not going to give you like a token that gives you all access. And then you would put it into here and hit save. This empties out, so don't worry. It has taken it in. And what this allows you to do is match predictions. So match predictions, uh, you know, channel point bets, that sort of thing. Um, whenever you play a match with this enabled or you spectate a match with this enabled, it will start up a channel points bet for um, that match and it will put the player names of player one and player two and you can put a message here I think this is for the bot uh, I actually can't remember so whenever you play a game it will do this and when the match ends it will read who the winner is and it will cash out automatically the results of that match tournament mode lets you do lobby matches that have that span over multiple games so in tournaments you typically do a best of one and every single time you go back to the lobby and you go back into another match so people can, uh, check the loser of the previous match can change their teams. Uh, this just basically stops it so that every time there's one of those games that people get, uh, you know, cash out for, um, to, uh, you know, matching the tournament. You want the set, you want the winner of the set, and this allows you to do it. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. So um, let us know how you get on with the mods. Um, drop a comment, you know, uh, of how what you think um links in the description for everything that you need in order to get started with this and um yeah enjoy because uh I, I think this is pretty cool and uh, I've, i spent a lot of time on this so have fun